This thing is super close, folks. And this is the same group. This is super, super close of really catching a bid. You're starting to see expanded volume on the big days. You're starting to see very, very small volume on the res days. All this thing needs to do is Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access to Trader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So. Uh, let's talk about the tape today. So we got another day of uh, digestion, profit taking. I think that's the best way we can call it because, again, when you have respectively last week uh, a 9% run up uh, in the NASDAQ composite, nearly an 8% run up in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and around there is also on the S&P, just common sense. And that's kind of what we talked about uh, always, using common sense instead of uh, everything else. But the most important part was a back test was needed. It was expected. And the most important part is, again, trading with your eyes wide open instead of your eyes wide shut. And the most important part of what we're seeing right now is really good dynamic digestion, which is great. The good There's some good news and some bad news behind it. Okay. So number one, if you've been watching the news, now we're starting to get pretty aggressive headlines. You know, COVID has been coming around from the second wave for pretty much now for the last couple of months. But now we're starting to see in really big metropolitan urban areas that there's a big population. Uh, you saw the headline today uh, that Governor Cuomo uh, is thinking about, you know, is thinking about, you know, shutting down the schools. We heard the rumor yesterday about Governor Phil Murphy in New Jersey uh, possibly making an announcement from, uh, you know, from November 23rd to January 23rd. That was the chatter. Uh, you heard the mayor of Chicago talking about a possible 30-day um, stay-at-home kind of movement uh, from November the 16th. Okay, and they're also uh, trying to get people to um, to kind of skip Thanksgiving on in, in, in any big uh, big gatherings. So this is real. I mean, this is real stuff. Uh, again, people are dying, and and again, I, I get the whole thing that somebody's going to turn around and say, well, this is the flu. It's, it's only the flu when it doesn't affect you, okay? When you have a member of your family that dies from this thing uh, or gets really, really sick, all of a sudden it's not the flu. It's not somebody else's problem. So before anybody turns around and say this is a glamorous flu, again, remember, you're not speaking from somebody else's point of view that somebody died. Now, again, you're going to turn around and say, well, people die in car accidents every day. They die from the flu every day. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. But again, this is the time of year that number one, you have to be a little bit more sensitive to what people are going through. And if you did lose a loved one or know somebody uh, who did lose a loved one to this uh, you know, pandemic virus, again, just try to be a little more sympathetic. I respect everybody's point of views. But again, unless you are living right um, and losing somebody you love or knowing somebody uh, that you know passed away from this thing. Uh, you know, it, again, it's so much easier to say what this is in reality, what somebody else is going through. So just kind of on a human level, just try to again respect everybody's uh, viewpoint. I don't think there's a right. I don't think there's a wrong. These are just the facts, right? These are just ex exactly the facts that we are looking at. So uh, as you can imagine, the stay-at-home stocks uh, bounced again for the second day in a row. Uh, these EV stocks, man, talk about craziness. So NIO will never go down again. And obviously, again, I have to, I have to put in the sarcastic button from what I'm saying because if somebody's going to turn around and say, well, that's the top, Dan. Of course, it's going to go down. It's a sarcasm, right? I expect a certain minimal of intelligence when I say that, right? It's sarcasm, okay? We're obviously joking just the same way I'm joking around when I say that NIO solve COVID, right? We're joking, right? A little bit of intelligence to kind of understand when somebody's, you know, somebody's joking. But, you know, all jokes aside, these things are monsters. Uh, and not only did this thing break out and continues to, to break out in continuation volume, you know, we're now looking at you know, call buyers coming in this afternoon with the 50 calls. And, you know, going for next week, the 50 calls, the 53 calls. We saw the 57 calls. We saw the 55 calls. We saw the 60 calls. So this is a freaking runaway train considering they don't even sell these damn cars 
uh, in, in the States. It's pretty impressive. LI is another one, right? This LI is going absolutely nuts, was up $7 in the regular session. And look at this damn thing, went to $36 after the close. And look at this solo, this little one. They, they literally taken them up one by one. Uh, and it's really, really impressive. So this solo broke out, closed at 483. They had a little bit of profit taken. Once it went back through 483 after hours, look what the stock is doing. Went through the 520. So the speculation money continues to be there, right? The stay-at-home stocks, they woke up yesterday. Um, you know, Zoom, obviously, the key to the group here. Uh, Docu, again, obviously, any long, uh, long-staying um kind of uh, quarantine or second wave of quarantine that any business is going to have. Again, these are the stocks that are going to uh, benefit. So you could still see how much, you know, how much speculation money is there. And despite, for example, the Dow is down 300 points today, again, when you look at the overall macro point of view, okay, and I'm looking at it from the diamonds point of view, all what we did today was literally back test to the rising five day moving average. It looked like everything was about to fall off the cliff. The diamonds reclaimed the five-day moving average. And now going into tomorrow's session, you have to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. Same thing if you look at the SPX, you look exactly the same thing. The SPX had a big blow off top, uh, went to the rising five-day moving average. Again, that five-day moving average is super important. Uh, they tried to, the bears tried to reclaim it today. They couldn't do it. We reclaimed the 35, uh, 35, 35 level. And again, you have to give the bulls the benefit of the, of the doubt. This is where it gets a little. This is where it gets a little bit hairy for me, right? So we talked about the Nasdaq 100 yesterday, and we basically said, look, that five-day moving average closing above or closing below is probably going to dictate next where the where at least the technology group is going to go. Okay, so we gapped up today, and the queues were looking good. We reclaimed the five-day moving average. We were at 292, and this is $2 above the five-day moving average. As soon as that news came out with uh, Cuomo and, uh, in New York and Chicago, things started selling off, and we lost the five-day moving average on the close. Here is kind of where I want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. Usually, I would turn around and say, this is 100% bearish, all right? And, you know, I am watching ranges tomorrow to the downside, but I'm also keeping an eye on the strength, okay? Uh, usually I would turn around and say, this is bearish. The bulls lost the five-day moving average, right? I think if they start confirming today's ranges, they will go lower. And that's all true. So I will definitely be watching uh, this 287 turn tomorrow on the QQQs. However, I do want to give the bulls, just for a minute, just the fact that the Dow and the S&P did kind of reclaim the five, I would like to see if if this is the first day tomorrow out of the last four or five sessions that we could finally start trading in a correlated matter. So basically what I'm saying is I would like to see if the Dow can pull up the Qs. I want to see if the S&P could pull up the Qs or are we going to, again, continue to, to kind of trade on a disconnect channel? Again, I, I want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt tomorrow just for one candle. So in other words, if we start losing uh, today's ranges tomorrow before that 11 o'clock candle, I'm going to switch gears very, very clearly and start looking in the downside for the beta technology names. But again, I'd like to actually see them rally to see uh, if they can uh, if they can muster um, uh, some sort of rally. But, but again, I like these, you know, I like these EV stocks tomorrow. Again, I mentioned the names LI, NIO, they already went. Solo already went. Solo probably continues tomorrow. Look at this FSR, all right? We talked about this for a couple days. This thing is super close, folks. And this is the same group. This is super, super close of really catching a bid. You're starting to see expanded volume on the big days. You're starting to see very, very small volume on the res days. All this thing needs to do is just confirm this channel. So I like this thing. I, I do. I, I would just love to see the same common denominator that we saw from NIO before exploded, uh, LI before exploded. I want to see out of the money option flow on this thing. I'd like to see for next week's $20 calls for $25 calls. That's when you know speculation money is entering the building. And that's, and that's when you really know you have a legitimate chance once this thing confirms this channel that it potentially could run to the top of the range here. Again, this is a, this is a recent really, really big runner. This is a real company, really cool car. The Fisker is a really cool car. Like I mentioned, I think a couple of uh, videos ago, it looks kind of like a poor man's Bugatti. 
right? Nothing wrong with that. Very pretty car. So I, I definitely want to keep an eye on that. Uh, I'm definitely watching the stay-at-home stocks. Again, ZM, it hit the five-day moving average tomorrow. You know, again, I don't think this will be a huge move because, again, if you see this ton of supply, right? But at least it's tradable. This ton of supply, like every $10 up. And this thing, you catch a $5, $10 move, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. And again, we'll talk about the pivots in a second. But if this thing can just confirm the five-day moving average, I think it goes higher. And again, if there's any more aggressive COVID news overnight, there's probably uh, going to gap. So uh, let's talk about today's pivots. Uh, beta was incredibly strong today. Uh, in the morning, very, very strong. ZM was strong. Roku was strong. Um, there was a trade on Tesla. I, I didn't put, and again, guys, for all you guys who are trading on the Twitter feed, again, you're not on a live webinar. There's so many moving parts with these pivots. I wanted to make sure you guys got the macro view. So if you guys notice, the high here was 523, right? I wanted to build over 523. That was the high of the day. So I wanted to make sure you guys are looking at a macro picture instead of a micro picture. Because again, you guys don't have the benefit of me giving you live commentary of what's about to happen. We scalped this thing from the 520 area into supply at 423. The point is it never occurred for you guys. It never remounted for you guys to take a macro trade. But I still love Tesla. But let's get into some of these other moves. Uh, Zoom was, was a beast today, 427.50, 428 needs to build. I thought initially it could get to 440. Uh, it traded up to 436. So here is the build right here. Um, here is Zoom. Uh, I caught a piece of this trade, but I caught it a little bit late. Um, I chased it up a little bit again, but it is what it is. But uh, 427.50, 428 traded right to supply here at roughly 436. So that was a nice move. Uh, Roku exploded today, 233. Well, exploded. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit. Uh, two, but if you looked at how the stock went from 233 to 237 on that on that candle, you kind of understand why, why I just said that. Uh, 233 needs to build. Here was Roku, right? Here was Roku. Here's the 233 right here, 233, and traded right to supply to about 236 and change, but it was on one candle, so it looked a lot bigger than it was. But again, nothing wrong with that trade there. Uh, Apple, uh, Square went pre-market. Uh, you never had a chance to get this thing on a regular session. It went up like a, like a dollar and change pre-market. I don't think anybody even traded this thing. Uh, Apple, 120 needs to build. Not a big move at all. Once they pulled the plug on that news, uh, the stock came right back in. So here was the 120. You know, it went up like 50 cents. Nothing there uh, at all on Apple. Tesla, we just talked about. NVIDIA is an absolute beast, man. It really is. NVIDIA 542 rejected two times, uh, needs to build. Uh, look what NVIDIA did. Just an absolute monster. I mean, this stock is, it really is turning into just a beast of a trader. So here is the 522, right? 522 area here. Uh, 542, I'm sorry. 542 area here. See, one, two, once, twice, got rejected three times. It finally caught a bid here, 522, went right into supply here, almost 551. So really aggressive strength uh, this morning in the beta names. And then once that, you know, once that uh, news came out about New York schools, possibility Chicago, it was lights out for everything. So yeah, 444 uh, still in sights. Uh, big move there as well. And the video is just a monster. Um, yeah, so you see initial supply went to like 550 and change. Uh, Apple weekly call buyer, again, only went up 50 cents. Uh, PDD, not a big move in, in the afternoon. Uh, 136, 136 and a half needs to build. Uh, not a big move at all. Uh, so here is the 136, uh, ran up to like 37. Not, not, nothing big, nothing big. Came right back in uh, with the rest of the market. Uh, and I believe, right, I believe... That is it. Yeah, I still like this FSR. And any close over 550, I like this thing for tomorrow. And that's it. So, um, you know, look, we're, we're, we're literally taking this day by day. I, I think I've, I've, I've used that uh, terminology every single day. All we're trying to do is put together a game plan based on theme, um, momentum, okay, and overall safety. Again, always remember this. When you're trading, okay, um, you are leading with your shield, right? Always leading with your shield, not with your chin. Again, your, your first order of business is, is protector and then alpha hunter. And again, this is not your ordinary market. It's much more aggressive. You're going to see bigger ranges. You're going to see less liquidity. And again, if you're a new trader, and, and again, I've been saying this nonstop for years in the webinar, um, you might consider not trading the first half hour. Let the noise die down. Right, the spreads are wild, the moves are wild. Yes, you're gonna probably miss 
the biggest percentage of the chunk move, but you're also going to you're also going to avoid that big chunk move if it gets stuffed. So if you're a newer trader, consider trading after 10 o'clock as the first channel of the day. Things become tighter, liquidity gets better, uh, spreads get tighter, and the most important part is you can control your trade. As you get more experience, you start trading 5, 10, 15, 20 years, then you can start playing around with it. So again, uh, very solid job, guys. Uh, have a great night, everybody. Tomorrow is Friday, and with God's help, I'll see you all there. Take care, guys. Have a great night.